Six-year-old Elizabeth Hoyer demonstrates her new karate moves to her parents, Ted and Leslie Hoyer, at their home in Stone Mountain, Georgia, just outside of Atlanta. She's their first child, and she's got a lot of spunk. Watching this healthy, active child today, you wouldn't know that Elizabeth was born prematurely and had major health obstacles early on. While in the hospital, Elizabeth was diagnosed with reflux disease. I think Elizabeth started to show um, signs of reflux when she was just a couple weeks old and um, got progressively worse as she grew. Gastroesophageal reflux is normal and common in infants. However, when spitting up is persistent, interferes with feeding, weight gain, and the ability of the baby to thrive, there may be a problem called gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. Gastroesophageal reflux disease occurs when the lower esophageal muscular sphincter, where the esophagus enters the stomach, opens at the wrong times, stays open when it is supposed to be closed, and allows acidic stomach fluids to reflux, or flow backwards up into the esophagus. These stomach fluids are primarily acidic and can burn and scar the tissues of the esophagus, and sometimes can reach up to the mouth, nose, or can accidentally end up down the respiratory tract. After spending some time in the neonatal intensive care unit, Elizabeth Hoyer was eventually brought home, weighing five pounds and ready to begin her life in earnest. We actually had to wake Elizabeth up in the middle of the night to feed her so that she would meet her nutritional needs, um, so she slept really good. But for Ted and Leslie, Elizabeth's happy homecoming was short-lived. She developed a condition called Sandifer's syndrome. In the infants, it's the arching and staying arched and sometimes tilting the head to the side that occurs persistently, um, sometimes associated with pain or discomfort and crying, sometimes not. What they're actually doing is stretching the esophagus tightening that lower esophageal sphincter and preventing the acid from coming up. Six-year-old Elizabeth eventually outgrew Sandifer's syndrome and today manages her reflux with lifestyle changes, some medication, and regular visits with her physician, whom she calls the tummy doctor. Dr. Gold says there's often great insight to be had when talking with the child. There's actually fairly sufficient data that, that demonstrates that if allowed to, in a child that's old enough to articulate um, at least what's bothering them, what's causing discomfort. It feels like it's kind of coming up in my throat. That in fact you can get some relatively reliable and, and fairly accurate descriptions of the type of symptoms that are going on. Elizabeth has come a long way since being in the neonatal <laughs> intensive care unit, and she's old enough now to understand. I right, think you can make it up that hill. I think it's been so much of a norm in her life that she's just grown up accepting that this is something that I have, and this break. is what I do, and when I don't do it, I feel worse, and I hurt more. While most children will outgrow reflux, for some, GERD can be a lifelong condition. But medical experts say it can effectively be managed and children living with chronic reflux can lead normal, healthy, active lives.